Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this one. In this video, we're going to go through two big tech stocks. Both of these stocks have just reported their earnings, so we're going to look at their stock prices, look at their valuations, and we're going to go over some of the recent news and earnings from these companies, and I'll talk about my thoughts about them, we'll revisit the valuation, and I'll give my thoughts about whether I'm buying more of these companies, I think these companies are overvalued, and we'll just go from there and, and, and kind of do this live a bit. So the first stock that I wanted to talk about today is Microsoft, and by the way, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. So if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel too. But back to it. First stock up is Microsoft. This company is up over 7% today on the earnings that they reported yesterday. Just doing a bit of a longer term analysis on their stock price. They went all the way up to 336 bucks during... Um, 2021, specifically November 2021. So that was about a year and a half ago now since they hit that high. Um, they kind of trended down into the two mid 200s, 250, 260, before we're going up to 280. They've been dropping recently. I think they hit 220 very briefly before kind of the market began rallying again and they announced all their um, investments in AI. Um, chat GPT, et cetera. And on that news, the stock is now up about 30%. And to move 30% for a $2.2 trillion company in a matter of months is very irregular, huge move for this company upwards. So we're going to go into that a bit. We're also going to go into what kind of results drove this 7% um, share price increase today. Currently trading, it says at a 33 times trailing PE, paying just under a 1% dividend yield there. So not much, but at least you're getting something. And just worth noting, they actually at one point today, uh, about midway through the day, hit a 52-week high at $299.57. So this stock is right at the top of its game right now in terms of recent performance. Going into their... Um, earnings here. So they released their Q3 earnings high level. And please, as we go through this, remember, this is a $2.2 trillion company. So high level, their revenue was $53 billion, increased by 7%, 10% on constant currency. And what that means when it says in constant currency as the follow-up, that essentially just means that in US dollars, sometimes as they get revenue from overseas and stuff, uh, if you the U.S. dollar goes up in value, it dilutes the relative value in U.S. dollars year over year. 10% is assuming currency exchange is not a factor. So this is more organic. This is technical, but obviously it's a U.S. company, so this is what ends up getting reported. Operating income of $22 billion on $53 billion. So they have operating margins of over 40%, which is really good. Net income of $18 billion, also like that ratio between operating and net. And dollars, uh, diluted EPS rather, up 10% to just about $2.50. Just going to click here to see if they have any you know, more visually appealing data in their slides. But until then, I'll kind of keep going. They keep calling out AI. So the world's most advanced AI models are coming together with the world's most universal user interface. Okay, so they're really doubling down on their communication around AI. Google, in their defense, has been saying like, hey, we've been using AI internally, externally for a while now. We just haven't been talking it as this sexy development. Whereas Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, continues to throw AI out there like it's this this new thing, but it's really working. Their stock price is rallying off of it. People are scared they're going to take down Google. Um, so it's definitely an interesting dynamic there. Um, but as I go through this, they keep talking about AI. Um, we're going to get the most value out of digital spend and innovate for this next generation of AI, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So going into business highlights here, that'll go through different um, segments, but I think this slide deck's probably the, the better one to, to look through. So this is essentially what we we're just looking at, but going into the specific segments, you see commercial highlights, their commercial bookings um, look pretty decent, obviously slowed down off of 2022, but accelerated in terms of growth rate versus last quarter. You can kind of see the 
cloud revenues, 23 billion, 25, 26, 27, 28, five. So it's going up nicely. Gross margins on cloud are also at 72%. That's really good. It's, it's on the upper end of the last five quarters. Um, so that's promising. And some of the highlights here, I think for the most part on, on cloud seem, seem, seem pretty good. So excludes the impact. Yeah. So, so overall I'd say nothing alarming here. I know people are used to cloud growing at a higher clip. Um, it decelerated. So it's just good to see that acceleration, um, from Q2 into Q3 to show that there's more double digit growth left in this sector. They return $10 billion to shareholders. So that's not a ton of money um, when talking about a $2.2 trillion company. Uh, I guess $22 billion would be the equivalent of um, 1% on a $2.2 trillion company. So if they did this four quarters of the year, oops, that'd be $40 billion. It would be under 2% of the value of the company being returned to shareholders through dividends and buyback. So it's something I'll take it. Not a lot. Um, cash flow 24 billion. That's pretty strong. Continuing to go through here on other business highlights. So on more personal computing, windows went down 30%. That's pretty dramatic devices, devices like HP computers and stuff like that. Also down 30 windows, commercial products up 14 Xbox up three. So this is good to see that Xbox has stabilized. That was an area where they had some weakness last time around as well. Search and new advertising revenue. So advertising, including search, which is one of the areas people are concerned about on the Google side is up 10%. So that, that's good as well. Moving on to productivity and business systems, revenue up 11% here. You can kind of see in billions just that at the run rate. So on a quarterly basis, 15.8, 16.6, 16.5, 17. And then it looks like they hit an all-time record here at 17.5. So we're seeing some reacceleration across their business, which is really promising. Um, as they talk about some highlights here, Office Commercial, Office 365 revenue grew 14%. Um, obviously a great business to have, lots of recurring revenue from um, you know, business to business. LinkedIn grew 8% driven by talent solutions sessions. So I assume that means like engagement grew 15%, which is good with all the competitive, um, you know, opportunities there out there for different people's times cloud. We already went through, but you can kind of see that growth accelerating, um, really nicely as well as operating income growing at a, at a pretty fast clip there as well. So that's, that's good to see that they're growing profitably, Personal computing, this is where it looked like they had a lot of weakness. So um, personal computing down 28% on revenue. Just to try to understand this a bit better, um, that was Windows rather, that was down 28%. Gross margin dollars declined 9% and gross margin um, percentage increased slightly. Operating income declined, operating income declined. So looking here, it's not as pretty of a picture on this segment of the business. They're doing... In 2022, around 15 billion, they're all the way down to low 13 billion. So this is an area that they haven't been growing in. They've actually been shrinking. So I keep an eye on this, but I'd say this is a bit less strategic of um, a sector for their business versus like cloud or office or something like that. And then into the appendix, I'm just going to go to see if there's anything overly interesting. This is kind of cool. It kind of shows... Uh, the change percent. So if you, as you look through, you can kind of see most areas of their business are growing double digits um, throughout 11, 26, 22, mid teens, mid teens, twenties. And then you have a couple of areas going down server products, revenue, not sure what that is. Windows. We just talked about that Xbox hardware revenue down huge. So I'm not sure if that's like revenue on Xbox is, is, flat on content and services. So that's like games that people are getting through the software, but down huge on the hardware as everyone upgraded during the pandemic when everyone had cash. Not sure, but that's that's interesting. Uh, devices revenue down 30. So they have a couple areas of weakness and concern, but more broadly, they're, they're growing um, across many aspects of, of their business that are really important. One thing to talk 
um, is Microsoft's currently in the midst of a like 18 month pending acquisition of Activision Blizzard to become a huge gaming company. And that acquisition just got blocked today in the UK. Um, they thought it would be anti-competitive. Uh, Microsoft released a statement blasting uh, the regulator saying they don't understand the industry. This is going to be better for the industry and give more games to more people at better prices. Um, so they actually said they're going to be challenging this. My thoughts on this in general, from my like very limited understanding of the deal, it seems like it should be able to go through. So I was surprised to hear that Britain blocked it today, especially with all the agreements that Microsoft's been putting in place. With that being said, Microsoft like dying on their sword for this acquisition. Um, maybe they feel like it's the last big one they're going to be able to make for a while, so they really want it. But at the end of the day, they're overpaying for Activision Blizzard by quite a wide margin at $70 billion. In addition to that, this is a $2.2 trillion company. This is worth like 3% of their business and they're like fighting for years for it. I just like at some point, it's it's not worth the fight. It's not worth pissing off regulators around the world over an asset you're buying for an inflated valuation um, that is just not going to move the needle in any way for your shareholders in the short to medium term they'd probably be better off taking the $70 billion, allocating it to share buybacks or accelerating the rollout of AI in, in their product suite, whatever it is. Um, I, I would have been fa fine if this acquisition went through, they get some great brands and gaming, whatever. Uh, I just find it interesting since this is not like a, a fundamental part of the investment thesis on this company that they're dying on their sword for this acquisition. So We'll see how it plays out. Hopefully this doesn't turn into something that's like pulling away management attention for years and years on end, even though we're pretty much there already. That's just my overall thoughts on it. It's like, it would be good for them to have, probably not worth all the effort they're going for through, through for it, um, knowing that so many regulatory bodies don't want them to have it. Um, but we'll see how this one nets out since they are obviously investing all those resources and that effort in locking it down. So looking at the valuation of this company, they are currently expected to do, this is a 246 that we saw. They're currently expecting to do, oh, this is actually next quarter. They just did 245, expecting 246 next quarter, 256 the quarter after. So this number looks a bit soft. It looks like they're going to do about $10 in EPS this year. Okay, so and then 1070 next year. So at current valuation, they're trading about 30 times earnings for current year and then closer to 28 and change times earnings for 2024. So I think the company's probably valued at a good spot. I was adding a lot more into my Microsoft position when the company was at 220, 230, even into the 240s, um, because at, at that range, they were kind of trading in like a mid to slightly less than mid twenties trading, uh, pre PE multiple rather. And I thought that was attractive for the growth profile that Microsoft provides over the long term. here in the high twenties or around 30. I think it's still have opportunity to, to give good shareholder returns over the long time, over the long term. Remember Microsoft a couple years ago was trading 33, 34 times earnings. So this is cheaper than that. Uh, but it's definitely not as much of a screaming buy. I feel like you can probably get better opportunities in the market. But this, if you believe in their assets, the businesses they operate in, Office 365, Azure Cloud, Xbox, etc., to a lesser degree, um, this is a stock that I still think you may want to consider. Put on your watch list. Hopefully get it on a day that's not at a 52-week high. But that's my overall thoughts on Microsoft as a company. Going into the second stock, Second big tech stock that reported earnings this week that competes with Microsoft on a couple fronts. It is Google. Google has had a bit of a different story than Microsoft over the last little while. You look over the last five years, this company's up 100%, so it's doubled, done really well. But you kind of see it's down like 35% from its high there. So lots of has happened. Um, the benefit of Google is it is, like Microsoft, very profitable, spitting out cash flow quarter after quarter,
But with interest rates going up to a certain extent, it still brought down the price to earnings ratio on this company. In addition to that, some people are concerned on how much money they've been burning over the last decade on other bets. They keep talking about how they make sure it's high return on invested capital, yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, the company's lost money or other bets has lost money for the company on a quarterly basis for a decade. So I don't really see that return on invested capital coming in. That's just my two cents on that. The other thing is Microsoft is trying to break into search in a bigger way with Bing behind AI back search. So that's a huge competitive risk, whether Alphabet or Google has to change their algorithm, change their approach to search, even if they still win the war, it's still going to cost them resources. They're going to be less efficient than their model today, which is just a cash cow with limited investment. So not a good news for, or not a good development for Google. They were just kind of hoping things would go as is. They would be able to milk the search engine. They wouldn't need to fight. They wouldn't have to give more money for contracts to be default search browsers. So that is not a great development. You kind of see overall, this is a $1.3 trillion company trading 23 times trailing earnings and down about 30% from its high that it hit, but still up big over the last five. In the last year, it's down well off of its lows of being in the 80s, up about 20%, but still down 10% over the last year. Looking into the earnings that they reported a couple days ago here, so this company reported $62 billion of revenue, about a 3% increase from the quarter end of March in 2022. Uh, if I include uh, the other revenue, sorry, the 62 is Google revenue, they're at about 70 billion versus 68. So that's where the 3% comes in. One thing that has gotten called out on Google is their total employee count. So if you're a tech business and you're operating at scale, hypothetically, the more revenue you have, the less revenue per customer you should have, or employee rather. With that being said, Google increased revenue 3%, and it looks like their headcount is up closer to 20%. So not really adding up on that. Um, and I think investors aren't happy about that. They want them to cut more, and we'll see how that pans out. They did take a $2 billion charge uh, in these financials on earnings to work a layoff plan and, and cut employees. So I don't know how much of that's baked into here or still to come, but that's definitely one thing worth noting. Con continuing to go down here, you'll see the operating income. So one area that's a huge props for Google they finally turned their Google Cloud division that they've been investing heavily to grow top line and increase margins on to a operating income division. So that's good news for them, good news for Google shareholders. It's just the, the top of the first inning on that one, um, but definitely just like stopping it from being a lag on, on, um, on uh, operating income, sorry, I was at a loss for words, is a big win. They made $700 million or they lost $700 million less money just by breaking even. I think they should probably take um, a page out of that books for other bets who um, isn't doing their job if they're not losing a billion dollars a quarter, it seems like. Uh, so hopefully Google Crowd can, Cloud can sustain profitability on an operating level and continue to go from $200 million 500 million, hopefully at one point, cracking a billion dollars a quarter in operating income to really diversify the business a bit away from Google services. Those were the main things from the, the earnings I wanted to share, but stock repurchases here, they call that they're going to add 70 billion of stock repurchases to their capital allocation strategy. They call that out here as well. It was big news. It's a $1.3 billion company. So this represents over 5% of their overall business being bought back if they actually execute on this. They have tons of money sitting on the sidelines. These companies cannot do big acquisitions. You just saw what happened when you tried to do acquisitions of a large size as a big tech company with Microsoft. It's very hard, causes a lot of swirl, a lot of management energy, rarely is a net positive value equation for shareholders. 
So I like this $70 billion acquisition that they declare today. Hopefully they use it smartly on dips and if the stock was under 100 bucks and whatnot. Um, but I think that was definitely a plus for the stock. Looking at their earnings, they're expected to earn five bucks this year, six bucks next year. So looking at their shares, they're trading at about 21 times earnings this year. And then um, on six, they're trading at about 17 times next year's earnings. So relative to Microsoft, who has less of an existential risk element to their business, this company's trading pretty in line with the market for next year's earnings. You know, they are a bit of a one trick pony with advertising and search, but, and I do think you should right size every position you consider adding to your portfolio. But for me, I think the risk reward in Alphabet is good. Um, I consider adding more around a hundred bucks. I'd, I'd even buy shares at 103, 104, where they're at now um, and just add to my position um, within reason, I, I, I don't want to make this like a huge part of my portfolio, but I can see the, the risk reward being positive and I'd like to make it, um, or I like having it as a part of my portfolio at least. So between the two stocks, I own both of them. I think both are some of the best companies in the world, cash flow machines, returning capital to shareholders in different ways. Um, but at the current valuation, I may be more inclined to add more to Alphabet than Microsoft. Earlier in the year, I was adding more to Microsoft and I wasn't really touching Alphabet as all of this was playing out, but I've kind of changed teams as Microsoft's really ripped up recently. And I think Alphabet may be one I add a couple shares here or there. Now I'm primarily a dividend investor, so I try not to go crazy with my position in these stocks, but I do like to diversify and still invest for growth. Um, when, when the market gives me the opportunity to. So looking forward to keeping a closer eye on, on Alphabet as their stock moves in the days and weeks ahead. And I will be looking to buy some more. If you follow along with the channel in stocks I buy videos or my shorts, you'll definitely be kept up to date with the status of those buys. And if you just stumble across this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps a lot and would love it if you consider subscribing to my channel or watching some of my other videos. Would really appreciate that. Wanted to thank everyone who stayed to the end of this one. I know it was a bit of a messy video working session on these two stocks with me and I had a bit of a cough, but really do appreciate you guys. Not many people make it to the end. So if you did, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll uh, love to talk to you there. See you guys in the next one.